Now, if someone says, hold up, Kevin, I'm a board certified insert specialty, and therefore I know how difficult and competitive it is to get into insert specialty, and I know for a fact that it is not one of the least competitive specialties, I'll tell them three things. Why does it seem like every specialty is super competitive? Are you doomed for just about every specialty, or is there something else going on here that we gotta call out? Stick around to the end and I'll tell you the five tiers of specialty competitiveness and where each specialty falls. What's going on guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jubal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery. I often get messages from concerned pre-meds and medical students asking if they have a realistic chance of getting into their desired specialty. After all, Dr. So-and-so said that their specialty is super competitive and since they are a doctor in that specialty, they must know best, right? Perhaps not, and I'll actually explain why shortly. One of my companies is Med School Insiders, and we specialize in getting pre-meds into medical school and medical students into residency. At the time of this recording, we've had well over 4,000 successful customers. And the reason I bring this up is to say that we deal with residency admissions day in and day out. It's our bread and butter, so we firsthand experience which specialties are more or less competitive. But you shouldn't just take my word for it. There's also the NRMP, or National Resident Matching Program, that publishes official data every couple of years. So why does every specialty seem competitive? There are three main reasons. The first is that competitiveness rankings are gonna change year to year. The competitiveness of a specialty is essentially a function of supply and demand. If you have a constricted supply where you don't have that many residency seats, but you have a large demand where lots of medical students want to go into that specialty, that's how you end up with a competitive specialty. Conversely, if you have larger supply and lower demand, meaning more residency seats open, but fewer med students interested in the specialty, then you end up with a less competitive specialty. As an example, anesthesiology used to be competitive 20 plus years ago. Back in 2000, there were approximately 1,000 positions, but in 2019, there were close to 1,900. 20 years ago, you would be hard pressed to find an unfilled position but now there's more than a handful every single year. But there are other specialties that have gone in the reverse direction too, where they are far more competitive now. Decades ago, orthopedic surgery wasn't nearly as competitive as it is today. It's now ranked at number four compared to all specialties. So what actually drives the change in competition for a given specialty? It comes down to two main reasons. The first being the supply change. So if they're opening up more seats for residency, most specialties are opening up more seats rather than taking away seats. So that's gonna increase supply and decrease competition. And number two is gonna be changes to medical students' interest in the specialty on a population level. Some specialties have increasing interest, other specialties have decreasing interest. And that is a function of a few factors. So one thing, for example, could be mid-level encroachment. How protected is that specialty from mid-levels? If it's not very well protected, then more medical students are gonna be wary because they're not just thinking about the specialty one or two years in the future. They're thinking 10, 20 plus years when they're actually practicing. What's gonna to happen to their practice, to their job security, to their compensation in the future? Similarly, you can see some technological advances threatening or at least seeming to threaten certain specialties and that alone can also scare medical students off, spook them away from pursuing that specialty. Things like AI with radiology or another example would be interventional cardiologists replacing some of the work of cardiothoracic surgeons. The second reason why every specialty seems competitive is because med school is just really challenging to get through regardless of the specialty. This is one reason why you ask any doctor in any specialty, they're not gonna tell you it was a walk in the park that med school and residency was super easy. They're gonna say, hey, it was competitive, it was challenging, it was tough because they probably worked pretty hard to become a fully trained attending physician. This applies to all specialties. Being a doctor, not easy. And finally, ego, which is arguably the largest factor, but it's the one that we're the most hesitant to talk about because we don't wanna put anyone on the defensive. But it's human nature for us to wanna to take pride in our hard work and our accomplishments. If you came to me and you said, Hey, Kevin, you know, starting a business and a YouTube channel and growing that YouTube channel to over a million subscribers. It's super easy, man. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Sh you know what I'm saying? I would feel some level of dig at my ego. I would feel like the hard work I put in or the challenges I faced weren't being perceived as important or noteworthy, and I would resist your assumptions. The same exact thing happens when you talk to a doctor about how competitive their specialty is. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find any doctor that says that their specialty was not hard or competitive to get into. And part of this, for some reason, is because we tend to ascribe a specialty's importance or prestige as usually a function of its competitiveness, which isn't right. And again, I'm not saying this to put anyone on blast. It's 
human nature for our ego to be present. It's really challenging to get that ego to be in the background and not guiding our thoughts and our assumptions and, and most of our behaviors. I know I'm working on it and I still have a long way to go, but my MO has always been and continues to be giving you guys the straight facts, whether that's roasting a medical school that is misleading pre-meds or talking about competitiveness like we are today. Those who were with me when I first started MSI in 2016, you guys know how important that is to what I do. A big reason why I even started that MSI YouTube channel was I didn't like that there were innocent pre-meds being harmed by misinformation. Now it's important to remember that how competitive a specialty is has nothing to do with your value as a doctor, your value as a person, how smart you are, anything like that. It simply means how difficult is it to get into that specialty? And that can make sense to us logically, but then subconsciously our egos still tend to resist that. Now, if we put aside these three factors, namely being that competitiveness changes over the years, that medical school is challenging and residency is challenging regardless of your specialty, as well as egos, we can create a data-backed list of specialties in terms of competitiveness from most to least competitive. And this is not my opinion. I also don't care what anyone else's opinion is. This is just hard objective data. Now, if someone says, hold up, Kevin. I'm a board certified insert specialty, and therefore I know how difficult and competitive it is to get into insert specialty. And I know for a fact that it is not one of the least competitive specialties. I'll tell them three things. First, they're remembering their personal experience of applying to residency and basing it off of that. They're likely not considering the overall landscape and trying to help med students get into various specialties. Second, competitiveness does change over the years, and it could be that it was competitive back then, but less so now. And third, we're all biased because we wanna be seen and perceived as successful. Now I have two videos on the Med School Insiders channel that go over the methodology, the data, the links to the spreadsheet, all that stuff, which I've linked down below. And this is all a continuous scale, but you can consider specialties falling into five different tiers. And these are in decreasing order of how competitive the specialty is, meaning that even within a tier, the end of that tier is gonna be less competitive than the top, than the beginning of that tier. So tier one, which is hyper competitive, is number one, dermatology, number two, plastic surgery. And these are by far the most competitive. They tend to be neck and neck and some years plastic surgery is ahead and some years dermatology is ahead. Now tier two, these are all highly competitive, but a small notch below tier one in terms of the data. Neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, and finally ENT. Now tier three, we're gonna call these medium competitive. This includes radiation oncology, or RADONC, interventional radiology, and vascular surgery. Tier four, we're calling less competitive. This includes general surgery, med peds, child neurology, radiology, internal medicine, ob and pathology. And finally, tier five, which we're calling attainable, includes neurology, emergency medicine, psychiatry, pediatrics, anesthesiology, PMNR, and family medicine. At the end of the day, this is all relative. Becoming a physician of any specialty is challenging and really something to be proud of. You got through medical school and became a real physician. You didn't take some shortcuts of some others who wanna do a small fraction of the work and then still try to call themselves doctors. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Damn! But for real, you should be proud of that. Seriously, you did not take any shortcuts and no one can ever take that away from you. Now, at the same time, it is very important for pre-meds and medical students to understand accurately how competitive a specialty is. Not as some kind of eggplant measuring contest, but because they need to be very intentional with how they're allocating their time, their energy, their resources during medical school. There's no need to be a super gunner if you're trying to match into a community program in family medicine. But on the other hand, if you're going for dermatology or plastic surgery, you're probably not gonna have the most laid back experience of med school. If you agree with this video, then press that like button. If you are personally offended because your specialty isn't as competitive as you would like, then let me know with a thumbs down. And please do share it with others who you think will find this helpful and valuable. Much love, my friends. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in that next one.